Now, you've been looking at that baby so much, you're going to stare her right into a coma. Oh, stop exaggerating. Honey, it's not good for you to be checking on the baby every five minutes and imagining one terrible thing or another. I know, I know. Here it starts. Here we go. Rudyard. Rudyard, she's not breathing. Honey, she's sleeping. The baby's sleeping. No. Rudyard, it's crib death. It's sleep. She's asleep, honey. Maybe. Come on. Emma. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. That's better. Hi, I'm Joe Burgo. In case you didn't recognize it, that was the opening scene from the 1983 film Terms of Endearment. It stars Shirley MacLaine as Aurora Greenway, a narcissistic mother if ever there was one. Although it's played for comic effect, this scene portrays a woman so beset with anxiety that she can't empathize, so in need of reassurance that she pinches her baby to make sure she isn't dead. And then, when the baby cries, instead of offering comfort, Aurora leaves the room feeling much better. This scene also portrays some of the boundary issues that trouble narcissistic mothers. The way Aurora wants to climb into the crib is funny, but at the same time strangely disturbing, as if she can't bear the distance between them. In addition to craving admiration, narcissistic mothers often view their children as extensions of themselves, as possessions instead of separate people. They tend to view the events of their children's lives in exclusively self-referential terms, as we'll see in this next scene. What's wrong with you? I got some good news. What's that? I'm unofficially pregnant. I mean, we haven't gotten the test back yet, but you know me, I'm never late. Well, now I don't understand. Um, if you're not happy for me, I'm gonna get so mad if you're not happy. <laughs> Why should I? Why should I be happy about being a grandmother? Does this mean you won't be knitting the baby any booties? <laughs> Clap. Every time you get more than two drinks in you, you confront me. And I won't have it. I won't have it, not in this house. Excuse me. Again, this scene is funny, but at the same time quite revealing. Aurora can't share in daughter Emma's happiness because she feels the coming child as a narcissistic injury, a reminder that she's growing older. As in the first scene, her own needs make it difficult for her to empathize. Throughout the film, Aurora struggles with the reality of her advancing age, consoling herself with attention from a group of middle-aged admirers. She cares nothing for these men, but exploits them for the narcissistic feed. In this next scene, watch how uncomfortable she feels with physical contact. And so, another birthday for a gal named Aurora Greenway. Even though 50, she still takes my breath away. Mere mortals just gaze as she lights up their sky. A heavenly object, a siren's cry. <laughs> You're the best. Happy birthday. Thank Excuse you. me, Aurora. Do you want one for me? <laughs> Do you like a kiss? You're not lying about your age, are you? Of course not. I thought you were 52. She's really 52. Come on, Aurora. How do you expect to fool a family doctor? It seems to me she said her age. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my point is, the number doesn't matter, but the effort to conceal it does. Well, see, why does he keep talking? Dr. Ratcher. Damn it, I'm trying to do some good here. Now, the way to adjust to old age... Played by Melissa Leo in her Academy Award-winning performance, Alice Ward in the 2010 film The Fighter is another narcissistic mother who can't empathize with the needs of her child. In this case, son Mickey, an up-and-coming prize fighter. Acting as his manager, Alice exploits Mickey for financial gain, 
booking him in ill-chosen fights simply because she needs the money. In this first scene, Mickey brings his new girlfriend Charlene for moral support as he tries to escape the grip of his mother and his older brother Dickie. Watch how Alice interprets everything as having reference to herself. Yeah, I know, Ma. I just don't want things going the way they've been going. Man, that last fight, that you know, it was unfair. That was unfair. And we ain't gonna repeat that. No, oh, not right? in your life. No, but it's just you in the ring. Yeah, I know it's me in the ring, but I don't like the way things have been going here. Where? Where? Here, this, us, Lowell, the whole routine. Oh, you're very happy. Hey, George, George, stay out. You're doing all the talking. Let him talk. Listen. I'm asking him. You're telling him. Listen. Stay out of hey. it. Don't tell me to stay out of it. <laughs> Mick, what's the problem? The problems. What problems? What problem? Problems. What like problems? what? Like maybe you not showing up on time to train. Like maybe him having to come find you in a crack house when you're supposed to be at the airport. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Why are you talking? I'm Charlene. We just met. <laughs> We're together. Do we need to do this again? Hi, I'm Charlene. Hi, I'm Charlene. Charlene. Hi, I'm Charlene. Hey, hey Charlene. We're together. What are you going to do, Mick? Listen, some MTV girl works in a bar? What does she know about boxing? I know. They're going to Vegas and getting paid to train year round. Sounds a hell of a lot better than what you got him doing here. You gonna let her talk like that to your mother? Come on, Mickey. I told you, we're together. This is my girlfriend. I want her here. I have done everything. Everything I could for you, Mickey. This MTV girl comes along. Oh, stop calling me an MTV girl, whatever the fuck that means. She's wild. wild. The undifferentiated group of girls in this scene are Mickey's sisters. Throughout the movie, they serve as a kind of Greek chorus, echoing Alice's opinions and propping up her ego. They have no distinct identity apart from the family. In this next scene, watch what happens when one of them voices her own opinion and how the other sisters come to the defense of their mother. What's Mickey supposed to do? Dickie's in jail. We're not talking about his trainer, sweetheart. We're talking about his manager. That's me. Yeah, but, Mom, maybe Mickey should try something different. What are you doing opening your mouth in my kitchen? You owe me $200. I said I was going to pay you next week. I don't want another word out of you. That was last month you told me two weeks. Did you take sides against me in my own house? You owe me money? And Ma's been great to Mickey, Sherry. Really, I mean, who's going to look out for Mickey better than his own mother? It's a fucking girl, Charlene. We gotta get rid of her, Ma. The final scene I'd like to share shows the way Alice plays favorites. Throughout the film, she has a creepy close relationship with her older son, Dickie. A crack addict, but nonetheless her favorite. Younger son, Mickey, has finally had enough of playing second fiddle, and he punches Dickie out during a training session. The way Alice tries to mollify him afterwards seems manipulative rather than contrite. This is supposed to be my fight. This is my shot at the title. I won't get another one after this. Am I being selfish? No. Am I saying Mickey, Mickey, Mickey? You know what? If I am, I'm sorry. I thought I was fighting for the championship, and I thought you were my mother, too. I am your mother. Yeah. Nick, I'm sorry. I had no idea you felt like that, all right? If I made mistakes, I'm going to be better. I don't want to hurt you. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. In the second part of this video, I'll look at one of the most vivid cinematic portrayals of a narcissistic mother, played by Barbara Hershey in the fantastic film Black Swan. Before I sign off, though, I'd like to announce that my new novella, a psychological retelling of the Cinderella story, is available now at Amazon on the Kindle platform. It was inspired by the ideas I discuss in this video, and by reader comments to posts about narcissistic mothers and vindictive narcissists on my website, After Psychotherapy. If you're interested in the subject of narcissism, please check it out. You can find a link to the Amazon product page in the description of this video here on YouTube. Thanks for your support.